Cervical cancer is a disease that affects the cells on the surface of the cervix. The cervix is the neck of the womb. Now, 580,000 women will get this disease every year, and a quarter of a million women will die of it. And this disease is preventable. We actually know a lot about this disease. We know what causes it, and we actually have access to the cervix, easy access to the cervix, and we can pick up changes that take place before the cancer develops. So what we know is we know that there's a group of viruses called the human papilloma viruses, or HPV for short, that infect the cells of the cervix. If the immune system doesn't clear that infection, and the infection persists, continues, then it causes changes in the cervix. So in order to actually understand about the pap smear and the vaccine, you need to understand that the cervical changes that take place are because of virus. And that virus is very, very common. It's like having the flu. Now, in the old days, before we actually understood what causes the cervical changes, which ultimately may lead to cervical cancer, we did pap smears. Pap smear is just a little brush that scrapes the cells on the surface of the cervix, and they spread it on, the, on a slide, and then they look down a microscope. And they're looking for changes. The idea is to pick up the changes before they become cancerous. So it's not to pick up cancer. If you pick up cancer, you already missed the boat. So that's the idea of the pap smears. And that's been around for a long time. And back home in the UK, we started doing that back in the late 80s. And there's a very well-developed program. And the idea is that you start taking smears on women from the age of 25, every three years up to the age of 50, and from the age of 50 to 65, every five years. And that's been around for the last three decades, three, four decades. And that has worked really, really well. So if you look at the UK, more than 70% of cervical cancers have disappeared, have been prevented by smears. Now, the idea of the vaccine is something completely different. Here, you're actually trying to prevent changes happening at all by preventing actually the infection. So we know that the, vac the virus causes the changes. The idea is that you get the vaccine to prevent the virus actually affecting the cells. And that's been around now for the last 15 years. We do it routinely in the UK for all school age girls. And the idea again is to give it to women or girls before they become sexually active, before they become exposed to the virus. Now, having said that, it doesn't mean that women can't have the vaccine. So that is a common misconception that women will come to me in clinic and say, doctor, you know, do I need to take the vaccine? Yes, women need to take the vaccine. All women, because you can potentially prevent that infection if they've not been exposed to it. The other thing is, it's not just women that should get the vaccine boys and men should get the vaccine because they can carry the HPV virus as well. And in Australia, they already vaccinate men. I'm a father. My son is 13, my daughter is 11. They will both get the vaccine. I am absolutely certain about its safety. I'm certain about its effectiveness. And I'm certain about the fact that it's good for boys and girls. And then I would have done my duty as a father.